Have you ever thought about the importance of what you say? Today I want to talk to you about the power of our words and the importance of our actions. Have you ever said something you wish you could take back? You wish it had never popped out of your mouth? I believe most of us have had that very uncomfortable experience where a hasty remark comes out of our mouth or we let something out in anger, but then we almost immediately regret what we said. I know I've experienced this. As we navigate life, especially in a world that is often hostile toward Christianity, it's crucial to reflect on how we communicate and connect with others. Is what we're saying and what we're doing pointing them to Christ consistently? In James 1.26, we are reminded, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. This means if you can't control your mouth, then what you're saying you believe is useless because nobody's going to believe you. That's a tough pill to swallow. It confronts us with the reality of our actions and particularly of our speech. But we must align our actions and our speech so people see us living out what we say we believe. When we gather on Sundays, we participate in prayer, we may serve in our church community, and these are meaningful acts. They have a purpose, but if we can't control our tongue, what does it all amount to? Because when the people around us look at us, they're like, okay, yeah, you do all this stuff, but I hear what comes out of your mouth Monday through Saturday. You're just showing up in church and playing a game. Maybe it's what we post on social media that we need to watch. People watch your social media when you claim to be a Christian. They are paying attention to how much grumbling and complaining you're doing on there, how much gossiping you're doing on there, how many ways you're attacking not just people, but the cultures around you, your church community, your government. Like Your words are significant. Use them wisely. James emphasizes that true religion is about more than our speech. In James 1.27, we read that religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. In biblical times, orphans and widows were the least of the least. They had the least and they struggled the most. In our culture, that might be homeless people. That might be people who are extremely low income. That might be people who have mental health or physical limitations that make it hard for them to get out there and do what they need to do to survive. That might be some of our military that have come back damaged from fighting to protect us. These are the people we need to be taking care of. We are called to actively care for those in need. It's a powerful way to live out our faith, reminding us that our words must be accompanied by meaningful action. When we reach out to care for others, whether it's through volunteering, providing emotional support, or advocating for justice for a child that's being hurt, we become living reflections of Christ's love. James doesn't stop there, though. He also warns us against being swayed by the corrupting habits of the world. We're told, in essence, to guard our hearts and guard our minds. Our daily lives need to be guarded from external influences that can sway our judgment one way or the other and affect how we choose to act. As followers of Christ, we must live intentionally. So, let's ask ourselves this today. What influences our speech? What shapes our actions? Are we allowing the negativity of the world of the internet, of media, to allow us to grow bitter toward one another and toward the people who need us the most. As we cultivate self-control over our words and take intentional actions to care for others, we will indeed stand out in a world that often likes kindness and compassion. Our ability to control our speech and express genuine concern for those in need becomes a living testimony of God's love. When we see, when people see us showing care and compassion, they'll stop and take notice. They'll wonder what's different about you. Why are you doing this? I live in Western North Carolina in the foothills of where everything happened with Hurricane Helene. And I have seen 
the people pouring into Western North Carolina and had the privilege to go up and serve and seeing people pour out their hearts for these people who need so much right now just really touched my heart. Some of them Christian, some of them not. But they cared enough to give of themselves to other people. As Christians, who has everything according to God's word, are we willing to pour out to other people with the same compassion? Let's strive to let our faith and our words come together in alignment so that our lives become a reflection of God above. So other people see Jesus lived out in us.